Hello comrades and welcome to another episode of Shanka Show, stories about life in the Soviet Union. My name is Sergei Sputnikov and back in 1971 I was born in the USSR. Меня зовут Сергей Спутников и я родился в Советском Союзе. So today we're gonna talk a little bit more about hygiene in the Soviet Union. So recently I got coached by Bogdan, a friend of mine from Moldova who helped me with my videos and he mentioned that I kind of skip over a lot of uh, small details that may be important and interesting for my American and generally foreign viewers. So today we're going to try to get a little bit into the detailed explanation and it relates to the hygiene in the Soviet Union and specifically about my family and my way that I was washed and cleaned. So today we're going to talk in excruciating, I hope I pulled that word out good, excruciating detail about these two pictures that shows me taking a bath while we lived in the dorms in Kiev, Ukraine, sometimes around 1975 when I was four or so. Okay, so let's take a look at this first picture. So there's your happy Soviet uh, childhood photo. I'm smiling, I'm all happy. I think I'm a little bit embarrassed because of course I'm naked uh, sitting in this uh, metal tub. So this picture as I mentioned was taken in the dorm room this is the room that we shared with another family for, I believe, maybe up to six years. So my parents got married in 1970 and I was born in 1971 in July. Long time ago, I made a video about life in the Soviet dorms and our dorm building was uh, built by German POWs. So I would say that's probably sometimes around 1946-47. It was a solid uh, brick building, four-story high. And what's interesting about that era buildings, uh, it didn't have a hot water supply. Later on, I believe it was maybe starting 60s, 70s, and, and later on, we had the central hot water supply. So there'll be two pipes going into the buildings. One was cold water, one was hot water. Prior to that, there'll be just one line supplying cold water and it's all you have. So this is what our apartment had, not apartment, but dorms, just the cold water, nothing else. So this picture was probably t was taken on Sunday, you know, before the new week start in Soviet Russia, you start week on Monday, not Sunday. Like our calendars, they begin with Mondays, not Sundays. I found it really bizarre here in America. So anyway, so my mom had to go to the kitchen and it's a communal kitchen for the whole floor and get some cold water and heat it up, then she had to bring those, uh, I don't know, she used the bucket or she used a teapot, she'll bring that boiling hot water and fill that uh, metal tub, then she had some cold water to make it some decent temperature and that's how I was taking a bath. This tub we actually called Nochvy, Nochvy, it's uh, made out of steel with some zinc cover so it's оцинкованное железо it's how it's called in Russian so it won't get rusty too quick and my mother used it to do laundry and uh, give me a bath on Sundays. So if you take a close look my tub is set up on two mismatched uh, dining room chairs one has a solid back one has different back so this is how my mom would set it up on two chairs and she put it in a way, then she fills it with water. I assume this picture was taken by my uncle Misha who had a camera and he probably just came over to visit and took a picture of me while taking a bath. So thanks to him we have this, uh, I almost want to say incredible picture but it's pretty interesting. Behind those two mismatched chairs uh, there is a dining room table which served a dual purpose. First of all, it served as a dining room table, duh. And it also was a separator between my family and our co-inhibitors, I think, what is the word? So the other family. So my family lived on the left side, looking at this picture. Like behind my back, there's my parents' bed. And on the right side, of course, uh, you see, you don't see it, but that's where the bed was for other family. Recently, I posted this picture on the Reddit, the subreddit called USSR or R USSR. 
you know, and I'm trying to kind of give people an idea about life in the Soviet Union, not, you know, this uh, romantic view or like a dark, dark view, just how it was. And so I posted this picture and I explained like, hey, this is how I lived with my family for five years, sharing a room with another family. And some guy, I guess, he is extremely optimistic, uh, tanky, because he's like, so how was the experience? Uh, did you guys enjoy sharing a room with another family? And I was like, are you kidding me? If you look at the table, you could see there is the baby bottle. It's actually a glass bottle with the rubber nipple and it has milk. So our last neighbors, my mother told me, of course, I was too little to remember, but she said, I think over this period of five, six years that we lived in this room, we shared it with three different families. And the last family had a young baby girl named Ruslana. And she was a crybaby, like she cried a lot at night. So of course, how can you sleep when there is baby crying in the same room, you know? And it's like not even your baby, so you can't do nothing about it. Uh, so I call her Usrana instead of Ruslana. I was really mad at her that, I mean, it's not baby's fault, but I couldn't sleep good because she was crying a lot. So yeah, asking this question, did you enjoy to share same room with the same fam with a different family? It's like, dude, I guess if you know you are in the foursome, you know, then maybe you enjoy having another family in the same room, but no, that was actually horrible. I mean, no privacy plus the baby crying. Now behind me and behind the dining room table where on the wall you see that kind of like a really dark, almost black rug, that was my bed. And um you know, I was born pretty much in this room. I mean, I was born in the hospital, but I they brought me as a baby, so we had a, a baby crib. But when I got uh, too big for the baby crib, my parents couldn't fit bigger bed. Uh, so my father ended up cutting the hole in the crib so I can stick my legs out because I was pretty tall for a kid. Uh, so this is my life conditions for like almost six years. You know, we're talking about free housing and all that stuff. Uh, but uh, I had to leave as the... I wasn't a baby anymore. I mean, I was a pretty big kid, but I had to sleep in the baby crib with the hole cut out so I can stick my legs out. And next to my crib, behind that uh, baby bottle, you see that white shirt. Uh, so this is someone's uh, shirt is being dried right in the room because, you know, besides doing laundry in the same... Uh, metal top that my mom was giving me a bath and I won't be surprised if she shared the same top with the neighbors you know our roommates uh, we didn't have a, a clothes dryers those things just didn't exist in the Soviet Union uh, so you have to dry your clothes or outside or on the balcony if you have one we didn't have a balcony so we were drying our own clothes right in the room where we lived so that's you see right there that that white shirt is being dried and behind my head on the left, uh, you see kind of this white bunched up stuff. Uh, this is actually the curtains that my parents made uh, so they could kind of separate my baby crib from the rest of the room so I guess I could sleep better. Uh, so that was another thing. So there's a rug on the wall and uh, there's this little curtain that was uh, making little uh, privacy for myself. Uh, so there's the second photo. It was taken on the same day, obviously, during the, my bath time, uh, but it's from a different angle. So now uh, behind my mother, uh, she was about 26, 27 in this picture. Uh, there's the wall, and I believe to the uh, left, as we look at the picture, there's the door to go outside of the room. Uh, so I'm holding some kind of cop, uh, cop in my hand. Uh, using to pour over my hair, you know, to wash myself. And there's my mom. I mean, she's not smiling a lot, but uh, this is her lifestyle, living in this little tiny dorm room for a long time and washing her kid in the tub. Right there, it's the brass uh, footboard. So that's where my parents' bed kind of starts. And so as you see, the different distance between the dining room table and the bed is just like maybe a couple of feet. So everything was super crammed in this room. I mean, sharing a small room with two families, that's crazy. Uh, I don't think I could survive that now, but of course when I was a baby and a kid, I didn't know any better. Just that was the part of life. 
So, you know, when people ask me, how did you like life in Soviet Union? I was like, well, when I was a kid, I didn't know any better, you know, but my parents definitely didn't enjoy that part of their family life uh, when they got married. I believe this item covered by the white cloth is our TV. Uh, my parents purchased on payments uh, black and white um, Slavutic uh, TV. Then we had, oh my goodness, till 1986, I believe so, for over 10 years until we got finally a color TV. Uh, so I think they paid 150 rubles, maybe even more. I think it was more than that. I know my mom said it was everything they bought, like large ticket items, everything was uh, purchased on so-called Rasrochka on payments, extended payment plan. Uh, so that was one of their first purchases is the TV. I think before that they bought a refrigerator, of course, that's more important. After they paid off her fridge, uh, they purchased uh, this TV. So, topic of hygiene in the Soviet Union. This is how I was taking a bath once a week on Sundays. And, of course, my mom could do it more often. But that's a, a lot of effort uh, to heat up water in the communal kitchen. Get, uh, carry this hot pot with hot water back in the room. You know, pour it in the top, set it all up. So, of course, it would be challenging to do it more often. But if she had to, she probably had to. Uh, as I said, we had only cold water supply in that uh, dorm building. So my father was showering at work. He worked at the Kiev aircraft factory making Antonov airplanes. So he was taking showers there. And my mother, she mentioned that once a week in the basement, they had actually like showers that had hot water. So only once a week, they would unlock that room and let people who live in a dorm room to take showers. So that was like ingrained in the culture uh, is to be cleaned only once a week. And of course, for women, I can't even imagine uh, having conditions like that. You know, the only uh, has a possibility to shower only once a week. So probably my mom had to come up with some solution, you know, to wash herself here and there. Uh, yeah, I don't want to go there. But this is what my uh, parents had to go through for almost six years. Okay, uh, so we're done talking about hygiene in the Soviet Union, and now it's time for some anti-Soviet propaganda. anti sovietskaya propaganda. So I showed you uh, the living conditions of the average Soviet family. Both of my parents were full-time employed. Both were labor union members. My father worked at the aircraft factory as a spray painter. My mom worked at that time it's some kind of like a, a construction uh, bureau. So they were doing drawings, designing new buildings. So they said uh, both parents employed full time, both labor union members, and they had to share a tiny room with another family. I'm trying to picture my family under exactly the same conditions. So my father will be working at the Boeing aircraft factory in Seattle. And my mother will be working somewhere, you know, in the same vicinity, both labor union members. Do you think they will be sharing a tiny room with another family? Or maybe they're going to have a nice house on their own, two cars and plenty of money to have a quality life. But this is kind of what the, the Soviet conditions, and, and it's kind of like we had cheap housing, but it was so hard to obtain that a lot of people suffered for many years, like my family spent six years in these horrible conditions in dorms before they finally managed to, my mother begged uh, to get a tiny little one-room apartment. And I mean, both are working full time. You know, in America, a family like that will be making probably $150,000 family income and had no issues with buying a house or renting a house. And here I spent six years with my, my parents in this tiny dorm. And let me push the envelope a little bit further. You know, like there's a common knowledge there were no homeless people in the Soviet Union. But let me ask you this. What is your definition of being homeless? Did my family have a home when they shared a room with another family? Would you call it having a, of course, they did have a roof about their heads, but if you live in a tent, you also have a roof about your head. Did they have a home? 
Not really. I mean, imagine young couple, they just got married and they shared a room with another young couple. I mean, I asked my dad, I was like, how did you deal with sex? I mean, back then when I was a kid, I had no idea. I had, uh, like, didn't worry about that stuff. He's like, well, we were just doing it quietly. I'm like, imagine you have sex in the room with another, like, total strangers. I mean, later you kind of know each other. But it's like, okay, it, it just blows my mind. And then you have two little kids sleeping. So you, you're doing it quietly for the neighbor family, doing it quietly for your kid. It's just wild to even imagine anything like that. But this is kind of reality of the Soviet um, life in the big cities, When especially for the people who came out of the country like my parents did. You know, they came out of the village and they had the only housing option you could get in the big cities is to get into the dorms, which were provided by, uh, you know, factories. We even had a movie that was called Adinokim Predostavlyaitsa Apshijitya. So that was a common um, way of attract workers because, you know, 100% employment, it's hard to find new workers if everyone is already working, right? Uh, so the way to attract workers in the cities was uh, you couldn't offer them more money because government will set uh, the rates, how much you pay for painters, how much you paid for, you know, construction workers. So you couldn't compete with another companies for workers that way. So the companies that needed badly workers, they end up building dorms. And that was the way to attract like, hey, if you're a single person, uh, we'll provide you with a dorm room. And that's even the, was the name of the set of the movie. Adinokim предоставляя сообщежитие. For single people, we provide the dorms. That was kind of a way to attract uh, people, young people from the villages. Hey, you can come to the city and we'll provide you a roof above your head if you work for us. Uh, if you're single, you'll get the dorm room. And that's how my parents, when they came from the villages, my dad got the job at the aircraft factory, which provided uh, dorms for the single man. And my mom did the same uh, thing. But when they got married, they couldn't actually go anywhere because every dorm that his dorm and my mom's dorm were for single people not for families but then somehow they begged the manager of this uh, dormitory and when my mom lived to have one floor for married couples because you know when you have a girls they constantly get married right so they were so desperate they begged the manager and he um, said the fourth floor would be for the married couples. So those uh, were, I don't know how many rooms, maybe five, maybe ten, and each uh, room had two families. So that's how was uh, my my family started uh, living together in a tiny room, which was technically not even legal because that uh, dormitory was supposed to be only for single females. And you know, that was one of the main arguments when people uh, mentioned that life in the Soviet Union was so great because housing was free, which is not true. Housing was affordable, not free. You know, you would say about 10% of the income you will have to pay uh, for the, your apartment uh, based on the square meters that you got. But the main problem with the housing in the Soviet Union is that first you need to get it somehow. And it was a lot of uh, challenges for many people. Some people could get it pretty easily if you were like, you know, Communist Party apparatchiks or you some kind of highly placed, um, I don't want to say executive, or your military officers. Those guys, they had a first dibs on housing. But regular workers were talking about waiting for 10, 20 years just to get an apartment. And, okay, housing was cheap. But what is the price of uh, my parents spending six years of their lives in these miserable conditions? I mean, if you can monetize that misery, uh, then that housing doesn't look that cheap, right? And then, of course, talking back about uh, hygiene in the Soviet Union, there's little cute challenges like uh, try to wash your baby if you don't have a running water, in uh, you don't have an apartment in your room, and you have only a communal kitchen, for the whole floor and uh, and showers for yourself only once a week. And so, you know, <laughs> I'm not sure how my parents didn't go crazy. I mean, after being uh, spoiled uh, living here in America of the country of uh, permanent hot water, um, if I'll be sent back in time with 
what I, you know, experience here and live in that tiny room in that apartment uh, without all those con uh, conditions, I don't know. <laughs> I'll probably just shoot myself. Well, my friends, uh, it's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoy this definitely long and somewhat boring video. As always, uh, don't forget to like, uh, share your comments, and we'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye. to have a signed copy thank you and if you love my channel and would like to show your support please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Oshanka show for as little as one dollar you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life in Soviet